Quran is the textbook of grammar. Since Quran is the textbook of grammar and all the grammar is there from the Quran, the Quran can never have a mistake. Point number one. Point number two. Point number two. Point number two. It is like you know taking a ruler and the ruler is there, has a measurement, and you're saying the measurement is wrong. It sounds illogical. Point number two. In the different tribes of Arabia, and you know Arabic, and Dr. William Campbell also will agree with me, in different Arabic tribes, the grammar keeps on changing. In some Arabic tribe, the word is feminine, the same word is even masculine in the other tribe. Same word, in different tribes, the grammar keeps on changing. Even the gender keeps on changing. So will you check Quran with that faulty grammar? No. And furthermore, the eloquence of Quran is so high. It's so high, it is far superior. And you know, there are various books on the internet you go. 12 grammatical mistake, 21 grammatical mistake, Abdul Fadi, 20 grammatical mistake. Do you think the Christian people took out these mistakes? Who took out these mistakes? Do you know who took out? The Muslims, the Muslim scholars like Zamakshari, what they did that the Quran grammar is so high that it goes against the conventional use of the Arabic. The Quran grammar is so high to prove the Quranic grammar was high, they give examples. And I'll give you a couple of examples which will answer all these 20 questions. They give the example, like we read in the Quran, it says that the people of Lut, salam, they rejected all the messengers. They rejected the messengers it's mentioned. Dr. William Campbell said, the people of Noah, they rejected the messengers. We know from history that there was only one messenger sent to them. So it has a grammatical mistake. Quran should have said, the people rejected the messenger, not messengers. I agree with you. With layman grammar, like how you and I know, it may be a mistake. But if you read the books written by Arabs, what is the beauty of the Quran? The beauty of the Quran is, why does the Quran refer messengers instead of messenger? You know why? Because we know that the basic message of all the messengers was same. That there is one God. About Tawheed, about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By mentioning the people of Ruth salam, the people of Noah rejected the messenger. It says by rejecting Ruth salam, they are indirectly rejecting all the messengers. <laughs> see the beauty, see the eloquence, alhamdulillah. Wow. You may think it's a mistake. It's not a mistake. Similarly, people like Anush Suraj says that Quran says, Kun Fayakun, be and it is. It should be Kun Fakana, be and it was. Agreed, past tense is Kun Fakana in Arabic. It's not Kun Fayakun, but the Kun Fayakun is more superior. It says, Allah, it was, it is, and can do. Past, present, and future. Thank you, Dr. Naik. Uh, may we have the next question from the brother in the front for Dr. William Campbell? Yes, Dr. Campbell, this is a very sincere question to learn a little more about Christianity. Uh, I want to ask that Jesus' ministry was only for three years after he was baptized by John the Baptist. So Jesus, the second most powerful person after God, the Son of God, what are his contributions in his early life from first, from one year to say 27 or 28 years? What are his significant contributions? This is, uh, excuse me, uh, Dr. Campbell, uh, this, this, this is not, this is not uh, the topic for tonight. We have, we had, yeah, we, you can go ahead. Uh, in the beginning of the, his presentation, Dr. Campbell mentioned uh, Zulkarnain from the chapter 18 of uh, Quran, the cave, uh, and he mentioned that Zulkarnain is Alexander the Great. Can you prove me how you came to that Zulkarnain is Alexander the Great? I only read it in the commentary of uh, Yusuf Ali. I w but regardless of whether it's Alexander the Great or who it is, the, the sun doesn't sit, doesn't set in a murky mar mar marsh. And that's what it, the verse says. <clears throat> okay, yeah, thank you. Yes, sister, the question for Dr. Zakir. I don't know the exact verse, but when the Bible says, for as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly, of the fish, so shall the Son of Man be for three days and three nights the heart of the earth. Did Jesus, peace be upon him, scientifically fulfill the sign of Jonah? 
What the sister is referring to the verse of the Bible, Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 12, verse number 30 and 40. When people ask Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, show me a sign, show me a miracle. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says, you evil and adulterous generation, seeking after a sign, no sign shall be given to you, but the sign of Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the whale, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Sign of Jonah. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, puts all his eggs in one basket. And if you go to the sign of Jonah, the book of Jonah is less than two pages, and most of us know. And if you analyze that Jonah was three days and three nights, but Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, we know from the Gospels that he was put on the cross, the alleged crucifixion, alleged. By late evening, he was brought down from the cross and put in the sepulcher. And on Sunday morning, if you see, the stone is moved away and the sepulcher is completely empty. So Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is in the tomb on Friday night. Friday night he was in the tomb. Friday night. He was there in Saturday morning, one day, one night, one day. And he was there Saturday night. So two night and one day. Two night and Sunday morning the tomb was empty. So Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was there for two nights and one day. It's not three days and three nights. Dr. William Campbell gives the reply in his book that, you know, part of the day can be counted as one day. And if a patient comes to me who's sick on Saturday night, on Monday morning, and if I ask him, how long are you sick for, he will say three days. I agree with you. Concordance approach, I agree. I'm very generous. You say part of the day is full day, I agree with you. So Saturday night, part of the day, one day. Sunday, part of the day, full day, one good. Monday, part of the day, full day, no problem. If patient says three days, no objection. But no patient will ever say three days and three nights. I challenge. I have, alhamdulillah, met various patients. I have not come across a single patient, including Christian missionaries, who have ever told to me, who were sick in the night, day before yesterday, saying, I am sick for three days, three nights. So Jesus Christ, peace be upon say three days. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says three days and three nights. So, it is a mathematical error. Scientifically, Jesus Christ, peace be upon didn't prove. And furthermore, the prophecy says, as Jonah was, so shall the son of man be. Jonah was how? How was Jonah in the belly of the whale, belly of the fish? Dead or alive? Alive. When he was thrown overboard, he was alive. In the belly of the whale, he goes around the ocean. Dead or alive? Alive. He prays to Almighty God. Dead or alive? Alive. He is vomited out on the seashore. Dead or alive? Alive, 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 alive. When I asked the Christians, how was Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, in the sepulchre, in the tomb, dead or alive? Me dead. Alive. Alhamdulillah. Is it a Christian? If he's alive, Alhamdulillah, he was not crucified. If he's dead, he hasn't fulfilled the sign. You can refer to my video cassette, was Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, really crucified? It's proved that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was not crucified. As the Quran says in Surah Nisa, chapter 4, 157, They didn't kill him, neither did they crucify him. It was only made to appear so. Thank you, Dr. Naik. Doctor, for, question for Dr. William. Dr. Campbell, since you are a medical doctor, could you please explain scientifically the various medical aspects that in the Bible regarding, because you didn't answer them in your rebuttal, for example, blood used as a disinfectant, bitter water test for adultery, and most importantly, that the woman is unclean for double the period when she gives birth to a daughter, then as compared to a son? Thank you for the question, and I'll get to it. But Dr. Knight keeps getting the questions that should become to the, to the Christian. <laughs> it says that on the next day, when it was one after the preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered together with Pilate and said, Sir, we remember that when he was still alive, that deceiver said, After three days I'm to rise again. Therefore, give orders for the grave to be made secure until the third day. So they're using these words interchangeably. As far as I'm concerned, all of these words, the third day, after the third day, equal what happened with Jesus in the grave. The other thing is, and then is re resurrection. There is one other thing. When Jesus was arrested on Thursday night, please be quiet. This is not going to work like this. Please be patient. 
Thursday, and, when, and Thursday after he, when he was arrested, he said, my, time, my hour has come. And so I count that that's three and a, 